What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm honored to have a good friend of mine, Dr. Mick Andrews on. He is a fourth, soon to be fifth year radiology resident at the University of South Alabama. And today we're going to talk about why and how to become a radiologist. Welcome Dr. Mick Andrews. Thank you, Dr. Connor. Hey, pleasure to meet you guys. Uh, yep, I'm just here to enlighten a little bit and, uh, you know, tell you a little bit about radiology, which I think is one of the specialties that, uh, you know, most people probably don't know a whole lot about. If you're like me when I was uh, in that stage of college and medical school and, uh, you know, like I'm sure you can attest to, um, we didn't have a ton of exposure to it early on. Not until your rotations you even get any exposure at all. So excited to get started. Again, thanks for joining us and here we go. So I think, I think the first question that I always like to start off with is just like, what is radiology? Sure, sure. Um, so I think in most simple terms, uh, a radiologist is basically a medical doctor who uses imaging and image guided procedures to diagnose and, and treat disease. Yeah, I think that you guys do a lot more than you give yourselves credit for. I, uh, I personally, as an internist, have seen you know, the reads that you guys give us. So my impression of a radiologist was always, you know, they get the, they get the x-rays, the CAT scans, the MRIs, they read it and they just say what the images show. But in reality, you guys do a lot more diagnosing and suggesting of further treatment. So you guys actually do do a lot more than just read images, which I think is the general perception of radiology. Oh yeah, of course. Um, and I mean, one of the things that, you know, I, I tell people sometimes when they, you know, wonder about what we actually do is, you know, try and think to yourself, one time a patient has gone to the hospital and they probably at least got an x-ray at some point, oh. you know, almost every patient is getting imaging, whether it's ultrasound or MRI or CAT scans, x-ray. I mean, there's all of these things fall under radiology. Um, sometimes it's to diagnose off the image. A lot of times it's to problem solve. Um, mm -hmm and suggest things that, you know, that may be helpful to, to the clinician to, you know, have responsibility for, for these patients and are, are basically guiding their care. Absolutely. And what, what attracted you to radiology? So, um, you know, it's, like I mentioned before, it's one of those fields where you probably don't have a ton of exposure to it unless you're in medical school and you, and you do a rotation on it. Um, once you're in your clinical portion. Um, so for me, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't quite understand what they did as, you know, like most people, it, you know, I figured they were looking at x-rays and CAT scans and that's about it. And I had a, a rotation where I went down and joined some interventional radiologists who were doing some procedures that I didn't know existed, you know, let alone a radiologist was doing it. And that really sparked my interest from the beginning was the interventional part, you know, and then from there, I just found out more and more about what the capabilities are and you know, it just kind of piqued my interest and, you know, technology is always, always advancing in radiology at a very, very rapid rate. So, you know, that's something else where I was like, this is, you know, a field that's constantly growing, um, you know, and growing at a fast rate, you have to stay on top of it to, to basically not get left behind. I mean, we haven't had MRI for many years and look what it's doing for us now. Same thing, CAT scan you know, 50 ish years, something like that. It's been clinically relevant. Um, it's and I mean, it's a mainstay in, in diagnosing and even treating patients when we're talking about image guided procedures. Oh, absolutely. It's hard to imagine medicine pre CAT scan, pre MRI, because obviously that's all that we know. And it's a staple in our practice. So what are some of the subspecialties within radiology? You, you briefly mentioned interventional for a second. And then what are the trainings associated with these subspecialties? Okay, so um, just uh, just to kind of give you guys an overview um, for radiology training in general, you do um, an intern year first, which can either be an in internal medicine or um, general surgery. Um, I did a general surgery year, and then following completion of that year, there's four years of additional training specifically related to radiology. So in total, it's five years for a radiology residency. Um, and there are multiple subspecialties that people go into afterwards. You know, I'll just 
to name a few of them. I mean, there's body imaging specific, there's thoracic imaging, there's neuro imaging, um, there's musculoskeletal imaging, there's nuclear medicine, there's interventional radiology. Um, you know, I'm, sh I'm sure I mean, there's breast imaging. I'm probably forgetting more, but there's, I mean, there's a ton of specialties and most of those are going to be an additional year of training and fellowship after you complete residency. Um, interventional radiology is a little bit different. That might be two additional years of training okay. or, um, it's kind of going the direction now where there are programs that have diagnostic residency and interventional residency um and the interventional residency would basically be the same five years and then one additional year That's both of those would come out and take board exams for diagnostic radiology you would both be board certified as a diagnostic person so the the direct path essentially cuts one year off of interventional radiology yeah. i understand yeah. Yeah. and you and that's not why it's, i mean it is it's that's probably where it's going. It is starting to get a lot more widespread. So sure. I anticipate within the next few years, that's, that's going to be everywhere. Sure. I think something within medicine that attracts a lot of people is procedures in general. Something I was not aware of until you and I were just talking before we started the interview was that you don't actually have to be an interventional radiologist to do interventional procedures. So a, a regular diagnostic radiologist who has adequate training in interventional in their residency can do interventional procedures. Do I have that correct? Correct, correct. So um, let's let's assume that uh, you know somebody goes into a diagnostic residency. Their intentions are to get out of residency and go be a diagnostic radiologist somewhere, where their majority of their job entails interpreting imaging and giving recommendations and trying to help make diagnoses. Um, it's you know a part of the requirements through the ACGME that. You know, diagnostic residents have training in doing these procedures. There's a certain set of procedures that, you know, all residents are expected and will know how to do once they once they come out of residency. And you know, a lot of that stuff may be, you know, image guided biopsies um, for diagnosing, you know, cancers or you know, draining abscesses and, and sick or septic individuals. Sure. Placing placing lines, ports um, for to give medications, that sort of thing. Um, you know, some of the more higher end complicated stuff would be reserved for somebody who did additional training in interventional radiology. But there's a certain set of procedures that every diagnostic radiologist um, is trained to do. Good to know. Uh, before they're out, you know, in the real world working. Yeah, I didn't know that prior to us just talking. So I'm, I'm sure that's news to a lot of people. And I know radiology is one of the more competitive specialties right out of medical school. So tell us, I mean, what did you do and what would you recommend current college or medical students do to try to just prepare themselves to build their resume a little bit to actually obtain one of these coveted positions? So, um, you know, like most specialties, you could probably attest to this, it kind of waxes and wanes as to how, how popular, how competitive it is, and it's just a cycle that repeats over and over. So it just depends at what point, you know, you're interested and you're getting in and how interested everyone else is. But the most important thing is just, you know, focus on the task at hand. Don't get ahead of yourself and worry about, oh, I need to read radiology books and have an understanding of, of how imaging is done and, you know, how to interpret it. I don't think that's, you know, super useful for sure. someone who's, who's say in medical school wanting to go into radiology. I think the most important thing is just focused on a task at hand, doing well in your courses, acquiring as much knowledge as you can about everything. Yeah. Because as a radiologist, you are not, um, you know, dealing with one one specialty you know like uh, you are reading imaging from every specialty in the hospital so think about it this way um you know i've got my cardiologist on the phone who's you know very locked in to what they're doing and knows knows you know their stuff very well and they you know expect the radiologist to be able to relay information that's important to the cardiologist 
um, you know, at at a level that they're used to. So, and that goes for every every specialty. You know, neurosurgery, family medicine, internal medicine. You need to have knowledge of you know the diseases and stuff that they're dealing with on a daily basis, and have enough knowledge of you know how potentially they're treated and what ramifications are of what you're saying in your reports to how to yeah. treat it. So it's very broad. Um, Got to be very well-rounded. The way to prepare for that is just be well-rounded in medical school. You know, just do as much as, as you can. Do, do well on your you step exams just to uh, get the interviews. And then, and then, so how's the work-life balance? That's something that I really, when I was in medical school, didn't pay much attention to. You know, it's a constant grind. You get into residency, you know you're going to grind. But at some point, you want a work-life balance. So how is it in radiology? So I would say radiology is probably one of the better, um, you know, fields to go into as far as work-life balance. And, um, I mean, that all depends on where your career takes you. There's obviously, if you're working as an interventional radiologist, that busy academic center, you're going to probably be getting a lot of calls and doing some emergent procedures and your lifestyle is probably going to be more like that of a, you know, of a surgeon. If you're working as a diagnostic radiologist in a small town somewhere where there's not a lot of high volume and stuff it's going to be you know significantly less so there's a wide variety but in general i would say radiology has a great work-life balance something i like to mention in these is compensation it's not something that i think anybody should really base their decision on what specialty they go into off of but it's something you should just have a general idea and radiology is actually one of the better compensated specialties within medicine Notoriously, it's been in the top five just this past year per the Medscape 2020 uh, census. It actually did fall to number six, but the average national compensation of a radiologist is $413,000 a year. It's a pretty nice, very comfortable living. And again, it fluctuates every year. It also fluctuates depending upon where, on the, where in the country you are, whether you're working for an academic or a private institution, um, but that is the national average at this time. So couple the, you know, great compensation with a wonderful work-life balance. It, it doesn't sound like there's, you know, much to complain about. It seems like quite a good living. Yeah. As, as you mentioned, uh, it depends where you are in the country and there's potential to be below that. There's potential to be way above that. Absolutely. Um, if you're in private practice or you do teleradiology, which is a service that as a radiologist, if you have the capability, you have um, basically the monitors and the computing powder power, um, you can have that in your house. And so you can do teleradiology read from your house in addition to, you know, At what you do otherwise. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of potential there. It just, it, it allows you to kind of, um, decide what's right for you That's and awesome. your family and where you're at in your life. Um, a lot of flexibility. You know, it's nice. It's a big benefit to yeah. radiology. And so what are, what are your, your plans, Dr. McAndrews? What do you plan on doing? So my, I will be starting my last year of residency here in just a couple of weeks. Um, I'll serve as chief resident for this year. And then my plans are to go on and do a musculoskeletal radiology fellowship. Um, and that will be a additional year of training. Nice. And then when I'm finished with that, my plans at this time are to join private practice. You know, remains to be seen where, but um, I would like to stay on as adjunct faculty at, you know, whatever nearby academic institution there is relative to where I'm living so I can continue to work with residents um, yeah. and maybe give them a perspective of someone who's working in the private practice world, which I think is valuable knowledge to, to residents um, in the academic institution. Uh, I wish you the best of luck, Dr. McAndrews. I really appreciate you coming on here to join me. I think people are gonna find this to be very helpful and informative. Uh, so again, thanks for joining me. And Absolutely, Dr. Connor, anytime, you got it, bud. Yeah, much appreciated. All right, YouTube, and until next time, peace out.